Hey you guys, it's Britt tonight. We're here with some updates on Gypsy Rose Blanchard and her little three ring circus that she is out here running on social media. I had a few thoughts, a few updates, and yeah, it's not just about Gypsy. It also involves Ryan Anderson, Ken, and um, a new creator that I found that is top tier, at least doing top tier, in my opinion, content. So we're just going to go over everything. If you're interested, please keep watching. Alright you guys, so at the top let's talk about what Gypsy herself has been up to over on Instagram. She is allowing her followers to hear the baby's heartbeat and racking up, you know, millions of views by using this child that is not even born yet. She's also over here playing with AI and making little cartoons of her and Ken. And in my opinion, this is not giving somebody who is really concerned about their pregnancy and wanting to detox social media and stay in their own lane and worry about prenatal care. This is somebody that is just rinsing and repeating what she has been doing for years. And I saw a video, which I'll talk about more in a second, but this creator was saying how there were or have been accounts of when Gypsy Rose years ago discovered Facebook and social media, it consumed her and she became obsessed with the attention that she could get online. And I think it's really clear to see that she's doing the same thing current day. She loves the attention, she loves the drama, and she loves people talking about her. And unfortunately, um, you know, there are a lot of people that still continue to support her and all of her antics. Obviously, I'm not one of them, but initially I said, you know what? She had a really tough childhood. I'm going to focus on what she's been doing post prison. But the more content that I have seen and the more that she continues to put out herself, you can really start to draw the parallels from what she was doing before going to prison versus what she's doing current day. And if you can step back and have a clear view and you're not one of her fans or anything like that, I think you can really see why there are so many people that are considered anti-Gypsy Rose. It, it's very concerning the rinse and repeat that she is doing current day versus what she used to do. And I think that it is absolutely embarrassing that she is being treated like a B-list celebrity. She is um, being given so much praise. It's alarming to me. It was reported that Dee Dee Blanchard was found murdered in her home. A small group of netizens, including those who knew Dee Dee and Gypsy, took to social media. Most of those posts were preserved from June 2015. Neighbors came out of the woodwork to reveal Gypsy was out of control after she discovered social media in 2009. According to one police warrant, beginning in 2009, Gypsy had five email addresses associated with different Facebook accounts that she created. They included fake profile names like Emma Rose and Devonna Wolf and Snow Gypsy, where she reportedly liked pictures of sadomasochism. In fact, one anonymous source who was interviewed just days after the murder told authorities a couple of years before she met Nick Godijan, Gypsy was quite active on Facebook, where she propositioned older men in their 30s and 40s. Gypsy hit on other men in the group via Facebook, men in their 30s and 40s. They may not feel comfortable coming forward. I know they rebuffed her, but still, end quote. Around 2010, Gypsy first encountered a man named Dan Glidewell on Facebook. He was associated with these sci-fi conventions, and she befriended him. Gypsy was 19 or 20, and Glidewell was in his 30s. According to Glidewell's friend and roommate, Gypsy fixated on him rather hard. During one convention, Gypsy ran off with an older man, possibly Glidewell, to his hotel room. Dee Dee, along with their friends at the convention, went in search for Gypsy. They found her in this hotel room, quote, getting ready to be intimate, end quote. Dee Dee was so mortified and utterly embarrassed by her behavior, she made Gypsy apologize to everyone who had been searching for her. A few weeks later, Gypsy showed up without her wheelchair at a neighbor's door, begging them to give her a ride to Mercy Hospital, where Gypsy claimed her boyfriend, 
Dan Glidewell, was a patient who had gotten badly beaten up. It wasn't until after Dee Dee's death that the neighbors see Gypsy on the local news and realize she was the strange girl in the wig that showed up on their doorstep. This is the infamous event where Gypsy goes back to Dan Glidewell's place and Dee Dee shows up. According to Dan's roommate, he wasn't really into Gypsy. In fact, Dan was literally shocked Gypsy showed up at the hospital. Gypsy insisted on accompanying Dan back to his place, attempting to insert herself into his life. Dee Dee shows up and Gypsy screams and yells at her. Dee Dee screams and yells. However, Gypsy returns home with her mom. When Dan, who was married, made it clear he would not be taking Gypsy to live with him in Arkansas, she became enraged, later telling her close friend and neighbor, Aaliyah Woodmonzi, quote, can I tell you a secret? Back in 2011, I ran away from home. I met a pedophile online. He took me back to his friend's house and made me sleep in his bed. But when he got handsy, I freaked out, end quote. When Dee Dee had confronted Dan at his house, she called him a pedophile lying about Gypsy's age, saying she was only 15 years old. Gypsy was actually 19 at the time. It appears Gypsy adopted this lie after Dan refused to become her knight in shining armor. By all accounts, after 2010, Gypsy had become obsessed with social media as a means to make contact with men. Dan Glidewell has testified to her pension for BDSM role-playing that she introduced him to. But she does this little AI photo, you know, and it's funny because AI... Um, gave Ken a lot more hair and made her look completely different than what she actually looks like. I mean, girl, why are you up here playing with AI? Like, don't you literally have advocacy work that you're supposed to be working on? Don't you have a child that you should be preparing for? Don't you have a uh, incoming divorce that you should be preparing for? Playing with AI isn't giving the energy that she is some kind of unbothered advocate that is preparing for motherhood. Let's move over to Ryan Anderson because Ryan Anderson, I said in a recent video, he was MIA. He was missing in action. He disappeared from TikTok where he was doing really consistent live streams. He built a whole community over there and he would jump on live and talk about the most recent episode. He would uh, kind of, you know, clear up things that were said on his part if he needed to give more context he would and he you know received a lot of uh, support for that i caught a few of his lives it wasn't every single one that i caught but i would obviously see clips and replays and all of that and then he poof vanished right around the time that gypsy announced she was pregnant and you know i think a lot of us saw that and said well you know this is concerning, especially the timeline and knowing that everything else put aside, it has to be really tough for him to be going through this publicly. You have your heart crushed and it's being consumed by people around the world. And now the person that crushed your heart is going back to somebody that she used to be obsessed with because he reopened that door and she decided to run back and, in my opinion, entrap him with a pregnancy. Something that I've said multiple times in many different videos is the fact that I think um, that Ryan was used. I think that she, I think that Ryan was a pawn in Gypsy's game and I think that he was used and embarrassed in a lot of ways and even if he's a consenting adult that decided to marry her and you know have her come live with him so on and so forth I still acknowledge that I think that he was taken advantage of and used um but I want to play this video because he says he wasn't used because he didn't put money on Gypsy's books when she was in prison. Unless she really needed something, then he would give her money for it. I don't think that he's really understanding like the large picture as to why people are saying that he was used. I think he's looking at like this one really precise example of, oh, well, I didn't give her money in prison. He's not seeing the huge picture of him being a safe place and being um, presented from her in front of the parole board so that she had a safe place to land. She looked really grounded. She was married. She had a great place to, you know, when she gets released from prison, she's going to go live with her husband. That's the part that I focus on. Like, you were used. It's not necessarily 
oh, well, you didn't give her money in prison? But let's allow this clip to play, and then I'll keep going. I saw a quote, you got used. I don't believe that. I, I mean, because I didn't put money on her books, number one, okay? Yes, if she needed something, I would help her. Absolutely. Like, if she was short and money hadn't come in, yes, absolutely. All she'd have to do is ask me. All she'd have to do is ask me. And, of course, I sent it. There were times that I did send send her money, you know, but it wasn't an every month thing. In fact, Gypsy hated asking for money, like, from her significant other. So, when y'all say I got used, what was I possibly used for? Now, do I feel like I deserve better? Yeah, certain, certain times I do feel that way. Absolutely. And I, I wish I would have gotten more, uh, you know, because considering everything that happened, I, I deserve more. Um, I deserve better. But, you know. It, so he says, I didn't put money on her books, but then sometimes I did if she needed something. It's very confusing, but that's not even really the part that I'm thinking about when I think of her using people in this game that she's playing. I think of the way that Ryan and the marriage and his house was utilized as a way to make her look more grounded, knowing that she was going in front of the parole board. The other thing I want to touch on really quick is this entire conversation about Ash to Trippy. Her name is Ashley. She came out with a video talking about Ken, allegedly, I guess, she had proof, so in her opinion, that he was bi and he was hiding it, and she had a conversation with somebody. She put out the video. Ken decided to absolutely spam her comments with some really threatening language, saying that he would mop the floor with people, and not only left one or two of those comments, but he was leaving comments on videos that had nothing to do with him following her initial video. <laughs> you guys are to believe me when I tell you I got confirmation that Ken Urker or Euchre or whatever he wants to go by is in fact a bisexual man. Not that there's anything wrong with that, just it's the fact that uh, why is he lying? Hey, if you're new here, my name is Ashtu Trippy and I love talking about true crime, conspiracy theories, and gossip. And this gossip I have is confirmed to the fullest. Now, I was skeptical for a long time too about the whole Ken, uh, Gypsy Rose's baby daddy's sexuality thing. Um, I thought, yeah, it must have been like trolls and things like that, just because the accounts they were hiding behind were so, you know. However, however, somebody has contacted me and they have let me know that this is in fact true. This is somebody that has met up with Ken a few times. This is somebody that is a regular average person and they have nothing to gain. They don't want their image out there. They don't want nothing like that, but they do want people to know that Ken is by and Ken is sleeping with people unprotected. And their only concern is that he is not taking that back to Miss Gypsy and the baby because they don't, they didn't even know what Gypsy did up until a little Google search that they did. So I'm here to say that if you're bi, Ken, just, just say you're bi, then people won't have all of this stuff to talk about you. Just say, you know, I've been with some men and, or I used to experiment with men. It's okay. It's fine. It's not, it's not going to cause you as bad of a rap as you're getting right now because as being the baby daddy to the number one liar in America right now, I mean, if you need something, I would run on this boat, doll, because you just, it's just so simple to tell the truth, you know? But if you find that it's easier to lie, especially to, especially lie about like things that people know for, that is a fact, because obviously you've had not only relationships with some of these men, but you've, slept with them so obviously you've given them a little bit of permission and honestly it doesn't surprise me that you were just on you know like grinder to sleep with men because you wrote gypsy because you full on wanted that money and i think you left her because you were trying to figure out how you can possibly have part in that and when the show came on 
and you're still talking to Christy, you found that opportunity, didn't you? And you took it. I hope this bites you in the ass as hard as it's going to bite her in the ass, okay? Just know that. So, <laughs> this is why. His account got taken down because of the way that he was acting. He was spamming hateful con uh, comments on her content and his TikTok got taken down because of that. Blanchard's baby daddy, Ken Urker's account is gone. And that's likely because Ken was incessantly commenting on another creator, Ash Two Trippy's video. Basically what happened was that one of the men that allegedly met Ken on Grindr reached out to her, so she posted a video about that. I will tag her down below, so please go watch this video. This is what started everything. Ken then comments, all this is proof of is you're an idiot. After she posted her video, she also went live and Ken entered the chat. He said, you ready for me to wipe the floor with you? I'll own any of you. Then Ken went on to comment over and over again on multiple different videos saying, even I can't wait to see these facts. Post proof, I beg you. So it seems like Ken was really, really pressed to get this information. Ken was even responding to other people's comments saying, it makes perfect sense. You're just too dumb to understand. I mean, obviously. Ken was commenting so much that people started to think that it was Gypsy using Ken's account. Now it got to the point that she had to actually block Ken because he was posting comments on newer videos that had absolutely nothing to do with him. But I'm pretty sure the way that he was responding to people in these comments led them to report the comments, which then led to him losing his account since they violated community guidelines. Ash 2 Trippy does have a separate video pinned to the top of her profile that has some more of the comments Ken was leaving. Now here's the whole thing. In her video, she didn't show any proof. She said that she talked to the person and it was confirmed and so on and so forth. The problem, the only problem I can see with this is that people operate off of receipts and there's a lot of hearsay, a lot of gossip, a lot of people saying they have sources and they've talked to this. There's a lot of that online. I really don't think that the whole idea of is Ken bi, is he not bi, like I really frankly don't care. But the reason that I'm covering this part is because it really goes to show how immature both he and Gypsy are. They are literally sitting here, they're supposed to be planning for a child and they are being messy on the internet. And that speaks to the pattern of behavior, especially with Gypsy, she cannot stay out of mess. She loves mess. She loves drama. She loves the attention. And I think that it's tragic for her child that's coming into this world allegedly very soon. She simply does not practice what she preaches. And for somebody who is supposed to be coming out of prison and doing so well and they're staying in their own lane and they're about to have a baby like i i just i don't trust gypsy i don't have respect for her i i think that she is like she is the drama and she uses people and it's tragic and i think that she is a lying ass hypocrite now i have some random clips that i will include in my next video but to close this update out this is very important. In the past, I have been very reserved with channels that I recommend y'all go watch. I try to be very selective because I've talked about channels before and then it's kind of come back to bite me in the ass. And so I've just decided to handle with care and be selective on who I tell y'all to go check out because it matters to me. Your subscription matters to me and your trust matters to me. So I try to be really thoughtful. I wanna talk about Becca Scoops. Everybody that is consuming the Gypsy Rose content has mentioned Becca Scoops. Did you see this? Did you see that? Did you hear about this channel? Did you watch this channel? I, the other day, went and watched all of the videos that Becca has put up on their channel. I have to say, some of the information that Becca has released in these videos, I did not know about. 
Um, I didn't know enough about certain parts of these uh, videos and my jaw was on the floor. I could just react to her videos and have y'all watch along with me, but I want you to go to Becca Scoop's channel and watch the content from the source because number one, it's a lot of content and number two, I think it's important to hear in its entirety and if I did a full reaction, we would be here for four hours. I will link Becca's videos or Becca's channel in this description box. I might do a follow up of kind of like key takeaways, but first I want y'all to go watch the videos and then I think you'll understand like why I'm so shocked by the information that was presented in these videos. I learned a lot more about Nicholas Godijan I learn a little bit more about Dee Dee Blanchard, and I learn a lot more about Gypsy. And Gypsy's role in this money fraud scheme. And it has changed my perspective of Gypsy being this child that was fully taken advantage of. I do think that there is some of that. However, the later years, I have changed my stance a little bit and I think that there was a lot more knowledge behind the things that were going on with Dee Dee and Gypsy and it wasn't just Dee Dee being mommy dearest and the wire hangers and all of these fictitious fairy tales that Gypsy Rose has published to make people feel bad for her. The other thing I would like to say is all of Becca's videos were very well edited and they were digestible. They were long but not too long and I liked the level of research that went into these videos and I also liked that it didn't feel like a drama video. It felt like a documentary with a little bit of commentary sprinkled in with it. And I appreciate content like that and I just felt like it was important to give Becca a shout out. If you don't follow the channel, I did talk about it on my community tab the other day. Go check her channel out. Like I said, check the description box. But really well done and I'm excited to see what else comes out from Becca. But um, really, really insightful really insightful and like i said i think once you really understand a lot of what gypsy was doing before the crime versus what she's doing now with ken and ryan and the um victim mentality and the being messy on social media and the thriving off of attention it really does come full circle and i think that's where my Pity kind of goes out the door. But either way, Ryan Anderson is back on TikTok. Ken got his ass booted because he was being messy alongside Gypsy. And um, Gypsy is living in fairy tale land, playing with AI, and I guess, you know, coaching her boy toy on how to be messy on social media. Does not sound like soon to be parents that are nesting and worrying about prenatal vitamins and drinking enough water. It is all a fraud scheme and it's being run by Gypsy. So either way, I think that's enough ranting for today. If you like the video, please leave a like in the comments. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.